First thing you need to do is install VirtualBox. The link will be in the description below. Select the best option that fits your current operating system and install. It's very simple, just follow the installation process and then you can continue with the next steps in the video. So the first thing you want to do is press new and you want to select the virtual machine you wish to install. So right now I'm going to be installing a Microsoft virtual machine on the operating system Windows 10 for 64-bit CPU. Now depending on what ISO you have, you need to select the correct specifications and then give your virtual machine a name. This name is not important. But I recommend when you're setting the RAM to at least set four gigabytes of RAM to your virtual machine. Once you have allocated RAM, you then want to set up your virtual hard drive. This is where everything you install on the virtual machine will be installed on your actual PC. You can change the directory, so make sure you do so if you need. If you need to, you can put it on a different hard drive to save space on your C drive. This automatically will save to your C drive. So then you want to follow everything I'm following or showing you I mean and you want to select how big you want the virtual machine to be the hard drive so I recommend doing about 10 gigabytes but a 10 gigabyte PC doesn't really exist nowadays so it might look a bit suspicious to a scammer so be warned on that but most of them don't normally check the storage so the next thing you want to do is press start this will open the virtual machine in a different window so you need to wait for it to load and it will open once you have opened the virtual machine, you then want to click the little folder icon and locate the folder in which you downloaded your ISO. You then want to open the ISO and press install. So I'm going to speed this bit up because it's me installing Windows 10. You can see how to do it, but there are a couple main things you need to follow when installing Windows 10 on this virtual machine. So the first thing you want to do is you want to select your language and then press install now. It will then start installing the virtual machine and go through some simple installation steps which you need to follow i will show you what to do so the first thing you need to do is collect i do not have a product key this will allow you to use the operating system for a while but it won't be an activated key you don't need an activated license key it will still work you then select the version you would like to install i go with windows 10 pro and you want to agree to the terms and conditions and install the virtual machine. You then want to click custom install. Do not click the first option as it will restart the whole installation process on the virtual machine for some reason. It will then start copying and installing the files required for the Windows operating system. At this point I have sped it up because this does take a while so what I recommend you do is you either follow and watch the whole video or you pause it now and wait until your virtual machine has installed and then resume the video once yours is installed. So when you're installing your virtual machine, you'll have to customize the settings. Do not use the express settings. 
This is so you can turn off all the personalization features and all the location features and all the tracking features that may give away your location when a scammer connects. This is very important because you do not want these services activated on this operating system as scammers are connecting to the virtual machine. Therefore, if they do wish to use these services, they might be able to track your location or find out who you are from these. Make sure they are disabled. You then want to say you own the virtual machine or the PC. It will then prompt you to log into a Microsoft account. You do not need to create or log into a Microsoft account. Simply press skip this step. Enter a fake name that you wish to give your user for the virtual machine and press next. It will then start setting up the user account. When you are greeted with Cortana, do not install Cortana because this is annoying. Make sure you do not install Cortana and make sure to turn off all location and personalization services during the installation. If you accidentally keep them off on, make sure to reinstall the virtual machine as this will be unsafe. Once your virtual machine boots into Windows, the next thing you want to do is restart the virtual machine. Once the virtual machine is installed and restarted, you want to go to the top and select devices and click insert guest editions CD image. This is so you can install the drivers for the virtual machine to work with VirtualBox. Once you have done that, you want to navigate to this PC and select VirtualBox guest editions and select the .exe file that I have selected. This will then start and boot up the VirtualBox installation process for guest editions. Once this happens, you will need to follow the on-screen instructions. Simply press next and continue as everything you need is already inputted for you. So you just need to press next, next, install. It will then start to install all the additional packages. What this software allows you to do or drivers allows you to do is when you resize your virtual machine window, it actually resizes the virtual machine as well. This just allows it to be a bit more natural and for you to use the actual features with VirtualBox to work with the virtual machine because it does need the drivers to function properly. So make sure you install this, otherwise you're not going to be able to resize your screen and you're not going to be able to do a couple things that you, like drag and drop files and a lot of other stuff. So what I highly recommend doing once you set up your virtual machine is to take a snapshot. Now what a snapshot is, is something that you can recall. Say, say if you install a virus on your virtual machine, you can restore the virtual machine from the snapshot. It will then delete the hard drive and replace it with the snapshot. So if you do anything wrong on the virtual machine, you have something to go back to. This prevents you from having to reinstall the whole virtual machine all over again and it's very useful to do. When you make changes to your virtual machine, such as adding files and programs, I do recommend you also make a snapshot at that point to save your current progress on the virtual machine so you won't have to redo all the work you've just done. So I do hope you found this video useful and I do thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please comment in the description below and I will be pleased to answer. Thank you for watching. I had, I had, I, I love my job. I hate a other job. I have only one job.